Hey babe, and anybody else watching, and welcome back to A Life Together. Today, Nehemiah 7 and 8. Yes, uh, yes, yester time. In yester time, yesterday and last time, uh, we looked at the wall repairs. Uh, and then we also saw Nehemiah standing up for the poor. We're taking it one step further. Now that the walls are repaired and people have moved in, what's the next order of business? And it's pretty cool, and I love it. And we'll talk about it. It's, yeah, pretty brief, but very, very cool. So, uh, Nehemiah 7 and 8 today. So, chapter 7. <clears throat> After the wall had been rebuilt, and I set the doors in place, the gatekeepers and singers and the Levites were appointed. I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother Hananiah, along with Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, because he was a man of integrity and feared God more than most men do. I said to them, the gates of Jerusalem are not to be opened until the sun is hot. While the gatekeepers are still on duty, have them shut the doors and bar them. Also appoint residents of Jerusalem as guards, some at their posts, and some near their own houses. Now, the city was large and spacious, but there had been few people in it, and the houses had not yet been rebuilt. So my God put into my heart to assemble the nobles, the officials, and the common people for registration by families. I found the genealogical record of those who had been the first to return. This is what I found written there. These are the people of the province who came up from captivity of the exiles, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had taken captive. They returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each to his own town. In the company with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nethemiah, Azariah, Ramiah, Nahamani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispereth, Bigvi, Nehum, and Benah. The list of the men of Israel. <clears throat> the descendants of Parosh, 2,172. Of Shephathiah, 372. Of Arah, 652. Of Pehath Moab, through the line of Jeshua and Moab, 2,818. Of Elam, 1,254. Of Zatu, 845. Of Zakai, 760. Of Benui, 648. Of Babai, 628. Of Asgad, 2,322. Of Adonikem, 667. Of Bigvi, 2,067. Of Adin, 655. Of Atir, through Hezekiah, 98. Of Hashum, 328. Of Bazai, 324. Of Harif, 1, 000, or 112. Of Gibeon, 95. The men of Bethlehem and Nephtoah, of uh, 188. Of Anathoth, 128. Of Beth's, Beth Asmaveth, 42. Of Kirjath Jerim, Kephara, and Beroth, 743. Of Ramon, Geba, 621. Of Michmash, 122. Of Bethel, and I, 123. Of the other Nebo, 52. Of the other Elam, 1,254. Of Harim, 320. Of Jericho, 345. Of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721. Of Sinah, 3,930. The priests. The descendants of Jedediah through the family of Jeshua, 973. Of Immer, 1,052. Of Pasher, 1,247. Of Harim, 1,017. The Levites, the descendants of Jeshua through Kedmiel, through the line of Hodiva, 74. The singers, the descendants of Asaph, 148. The gatekeepers, the descendants of Shalom, Atir, Talman, Akeb, Hatia, and Shobai, 138. The temple servants, the descendants of Ziha, Hapsua, Tabaoth, Keros, Sia, Padon, Labana, Hagaba, Shalmai, Hanan, Gadil, Gahar, Reiah, Rezin, Nakoda, Gazam, Uzzah, Perea, Besai, Menumim, ne Nefushim, Bakbuk, Hakupa, Harhur, Balzath, Basluth, excuse me, Mehida, Harsha, Barkos, Sisra, Tima, Neziah, and Hatifa. The descendants of the servants of Solomon, the descendants of Sotai, Sophara, Perida, Jala, Darkon, Gideel, Shephathiah, Hatil, Pekoreth, Hazabim, and Ammon. The temple servants and the descendants of the servants of Solomon, 392. The following came up from the towns of Talmala, Talharsha, Kirub, Adon, and Immer, but they could not show that their families were descended from Israel. The descendants of Deliah, Tobiah, and Nakoda, 642. And from among the priests, the descendants of Hobiah, Hakaz, and Barzillai, 
a man who had married a daughter of Barzillai the Gileadite and was called by that name. These searched for their family records, but could not find them, and so were excluded from the priesthood as unclean. The governor, therefore, ordered them not to eat any of the most sacred food until there should be a priest ministering with the Urim and Thummim. The whole company numbered 42,360, besides their 7,337 men servants and maid servants, and they also had 245 men and women singers. There were 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. Some of the heads of families contributed to the work. The governor of the treasury, I'm sorry, the governor gave to the treasury 1,000 drachmas of gold, 50 bulls, and 530 garments for priests. Some of the heads of the families gave to the treasury for the work 20,000 drachmas of gold and 2,200 minas of silver. The whole given by the rest of the people was 20,000 drachmas of gold, 20, excuse me, 2,000 minas of silver, and 67 garments for priests. The priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, and the temple servants, along with certain of the people and the rest of the Israelites, settled in their own towns. Chapter 8. When the seventh month came, and the Israelites had settled in their own towns, all the people assembled as one man in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So, on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud, from daybreak till noon, as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of men, women, and others who could understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform, built for the occasion. Beside him, on his right, stood Mataniah, Shema, Anahiah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Masiah. And on his left were Padiah, Mishael, Malchijah, Hashuam, Hashbedbana, Zachariah, and Meshulam. Ezra opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them. And as he opened it, all the people stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God. And all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites, Jeshua, Benai, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Sibathai, Hodiah, Masiah, Kalida, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, and Peliah instructed the people in the law while the people were standing there. They read from the book of the law of God, making it clear and giving meaning so that the people could understand what was being read. Then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, this day is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people have been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for this is a sacred day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to eat and drink and send portions of food and to celebrate with great joy because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. On the second day of the month, the heads of all the families, along with the priests and the Levites, gathered around um, Ezra, the scribe, to give attention to the words of the law. They found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded through Moses, that the Israelites were to live in booths during the feast of the seventh month, and that they should proclaim the word and spread it throughout their towns in Jerusalem. Go out into the hill country and bring back branches from olive and wild and wild olive trees, and from myrtles, palms, and shade trees to make booths, as it is written. So the people went out and brought back branches and built themselves booths on their own roofs, in their courtyards, in the courts of their house of God, and in the square by the water gate, and the one by the gate of Ephraim. The whole company that had returned from exile built booths and lived in them. From the days of Joshua, son of Nun, until that day, the Israelites had not celebrated like this, and their joy was very great. Day after day, from the first day to the last, Ezra read from the book of the law of God. They celebrated the feast for seven days, and on the eighth day, in accordance with the regulation, there was an assembly. I love that right after the walls are up, the defenses are up, people are back in the towns, there's a reading of a law, just like that. I, I love that 
passion for God's word and people are standing out there, at least that first day, I think it said from sunrise until noon, just listening to the words of God. And that got me thinking, am I, am I taking pleasure in doing that? I mean, I, I have that, I have that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I have that down as what I'm supposed to do, right? I know that I should be in the word and I take pleasure in the word. But am I willing to go from sunup until noon reading the word? Because I should be. I should have such great interest and pleasure in God's word that not only should I be comfortable for that, I should long to do God's word. I should long to listen to God's word. Is this just something that I do? Habit. That's the word I was looking for. Is this just something I'm doing as, hey, I know this is a really good habit? Or am I truly taking pleasure in God's word? And I find the more that I'm in God's word, the more I the more I do that naturally. The more I'm in God's word, the more I naturally enjoy it. It's like it's like something that just feels right. And I think that's something that God is slowly showing me is, hey, my word is good and right and correct. But not only that, but when you read it, you will begin to understand more and more and more how this is how I want you to be aligned. And it will feel good. The more you're in my word, the more right it will feel, the more sense it will make because you're becoming more and more aligned with me. Definitely worth praying about. So let's do it. God, we looked yesterday at making sure that our walls were up and that we have our proper defenses, that we are in your word. Lord, when we have those defenses up or when those defenses are at risk of falling, Help us to remember to be in your word and take great pleasure in it, that you are our defense, Lord. Your word is our defense. We thank you so much for your son and your Holy Spirit dwelling in us, that you are the one that we rely on. We thank you so much for your word and help us never to take it for granted. We thank you so much for your son as well, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, that's about all I have for you today. As always, know that I appreciate you. Wife, appreciate you tons. I will plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.